Welcome to Man Machine Safeguarding, Volume 3. This is the third in our video series on man and machine safeguarding requirements and techniques. Volume 1 provided background on the need for machine guarding safety switches by first showing the types of machine hazards that exist, reviewing industry standards and guidelines aimed at protecting workers from those hazards, and then providing an overview of design concepts incorporated into safety components to meet those requirements. Volume 2 went into more depth on the types of safety interlock switches available with demonstrations and graphics to aid in understanding how they function and can be installed to achieve a safer workplace. If you are not familiar with the topics covered in Volumes 1 and 2, their review is recommended. This video, Volume 3, will go into more depth on one of the safety system components mentioned in Volume 2. Safety Controllers. Let's begin with a definition. Safety controllers are safety system components connected between machine guarding emergency stops or presence sensing devices such as safety interlock switches, light curtains or coated magnet sensors, and the machine's primary stop control element such as a motor contactor or control relay. They contain redundant self-checking system monitoring circuits and positive guided output relays. Their purpose is to heighten safety by detecting faults or component failures that may compromise safety system performance and in such instances shutting off and or preventing restarting of the machine until the fault has been corrected. Now that we've defined a safety controller, let's move forward explaining the types of faults that a safety controller can detect the reasons and applications where their use is recommended, and providing a methodology for selecting a suitable safety controller for a specific application. We'll start by examining the types of faults that can occur in a safety system. These include open or misaligned machine guards, actuated emergency stops such as light curtains, pressure mats, safety edges, cable pull switches, or emergency stop stations an open circuit, a short circuit, a short to ground, welded or stuck contacts in the safety controller's positive guided output relays, a fault in the safety controller's monitoring circuit, an inadequate supply voltage to the safety controller, and capacitive inductive interference on the safety controller's inputs or supply voltage. In addition, some safety controllers feature microprocessor-based diagnostics to help identify the type and or location of the fault, thus minimizing machine downtime. Units are available for use with safety interlock switches, coded magnet sensors, emergency stop switches, safety edges, safety light curtains, two-hand controls, pressure mats, emergency cable pull switches, laser scanners, and safety light beams to satisfy a broad range of application requirements. Their ability to detect safety circuit and component faults and shut down the machine until the fault has been corrected ensure that the safety system will perform when it is called upon to do so. Now, let's move on to understanding the reasons and listing some of the applications where using a safety controller is recommended. There are a variety of circumstances in which the use of a safety controller is recommended or required. These include, but are not limited to, applications in which the assessed risk of severe injury and or frequency of exposure to recognized hazards is relatively high. applications for which the designer wishes to satisfy ANSI control reliability requirements. Safety applications using electronic and or magnetic input devices such as coded magnet sensors, light curtains or proximity switches which by their design may not fail to a safe condition. Applications having a relatively low level of assessed risk but for which the designer wishes to heighten the performance or reliability of the safety system. Let's look at these four types of applications in more depth. 
The first condition we mentioned for use of a safety controller was a function of risk assessment. This subject was covered thoroughly in Volume 1 of this series, but let's review it here. Different machines, processes, and related maintenance tasks have different levels of relative risk. Determining this relative risk typically involves evaluating three major factors. These include the severity of the potential injury, the frequency of exposure to a recognized hazard, and the possibility of avoiding the hazard if it occurs. One quantitative approach to risk assessment uses a decision tree which weighs these three factors and categorizes assessed risk into five levels ranging from B to 4. At level B, the severity of any potential injury is slight. Level 4, the highest level of assessed risk in this model, is characterized by frequent exposure to recognized hazards which are likely to cause a severe injury. For many medium and high assessed risk applications, use of a safety controller as one component of the safety system is an effective deterrent to an unsafe condition. We mentioned that safety controllers could be used where a system designer wishes to satisfy control reliability requirements. Volume 1 of this video series covers the concept of control reliability in detail, but let's briefly review those requirements here. A safety system is control reliable only if it's designed so that any single component failure does not prevent the machine from stopping and does prevent it from restarting until the fault has been corrected. Achieving control reliability requires constant monitoring of the safety system to permit detection of a fault that might prevent machine stoppage. Once detected, the machine must be prevented from restarting until the fault has been corrected. This monitoring and control can be achieved with an appropriate safety controller, thus realizing control reliability. Safety controllers are recommended in systems using electronic and or magnetic input devices that may not fail to a safe condition, such as coded magnet sensors. In normal operation, their contacts open, thus shutting off power when the guard is open. Since such devices tend to fail due to welded contacts, monitoring of their integrity in a safety application is required. A safety controller's constant monitoring and ability to detect such faults to stop the equipment heightens the level of the safety system's reliability. Designers may also use safety controllers to increase the safety level in applications having a low level of assessed risk. This is usually due to a low tolerance for any injuries, however minor. Now, let's review what we've covered to this point. We defined what a safety controller is and the types of faults it can detect. We followed that with reasons for use. Next, we'll look at the process for choosing the correct safety controller for your specific application. Selection Methodology once the designer has determined the required or desired level of safety system performance, he or she is ready to identify the other application characteristics that affect selection of a compatible safety controller. These diverse characteristics have resulted in the development of a wide range of safety controllers, many of which are best suited to specific applications. The selection process typically involves consideration of the following parameters type of safety application, stop category desired, type and number of monitored safety inputs, available supply voltage, number of safety outputs required, safety control category required, type of safety controller reset required. Throughout this selection methodology section, to illustrate the selection process, we'll use a decision tree model, which, as we work through the parameter criteria, allows us to focus the choice to the proper controller. Now let's move forward with a more detailed look at the selection parameters. We'll start with the type of safety application. The application often dictates the type of safety system input components that will be used. Typical safety applications include 
movable safety guards using keyed safety interlock switches, positive brake limit switches, hinged safety interlock switches, coated magnet sensors, or safety edges. Perimeter or area guarding using light curtains, light beams, pressure mats, or laser scanners. Two-hand controls using push buttons, capacitive palm buttons, or optoelectronic sensors, and emergency stop systems using emergency stop buttons, cable pull switches, or safety edges. Different safety controllers are designed to work with these different types of input components. The chosen safety controller must be compatible with the safety system's monitored inputs. Stop category desired. There are two machine stop categories, zero and one. Stop category zero is when power is immediately removed from the controlled equipment upon actuation of the safety input device. Stop category one is when following a stop command a time delay of up to 30 seconds is allowed before the removal of power. This delay is often desirable in drive systems where the immediate removal of power may result in a longer stop time than could be achieved by the action of a dynamic braking system. Consequently, it is essential the user choose a safety controller compatible with the stop category desired. Type and number of monitored safety inputs. The type of safety system input components determines the type and number of safety inputs the safety controller must accommodate. For example, a keyed interlock switch will typically have some combination of normally open and normally closed hard contacts, while a light curtain or capacitive palm button will typically have semiconductor outputs. Hence, the chosen safety controller must be compatible with the type signals received from these different type input components. Available supply voltage. Available supply voltage also influences the controller used. While safety controllers are offered for most commonly used power voltages, it is noteworthy to point out that 24 volt DC units offer the benefits of smaller size and lower cost, since a transformer and rectifier are not required. It is also important to note that regardless of the unit's supply voltage, all Schmerzel safety controllers convert the input voltage to 24 volt DC for internal operation and for the powering of the monitored input devices. Number of safety and non-safety outputs required. Depending on the application, users often require more than one safety output and may also desire non-safety outputs for signaling or for some other ancillary function. Controllers are available with different configurations of outputs to satisfy these differing needs. Safety control category desired. Safety controllers are typically available for different safety control categories. Proper selection is critical to meet the application's assessed risk level. In selecting a safety controller, it is important to note that the use of a unit rated for up to a Category 4 level of assessed risk does not in itself assure the overall safety system meets this level of performance. The safety control category of the overall system is determined by a number of factors. These include, but are not limited to, the type of safety guard monitoring devices, the safety system's wiring configuration, single or dual channel, the safety category rating of the safety controller. Ultimately, the safety control category of the overall system will be determined by a safety system design that effectively addresses the risk assessment associated with the recognized hazards. Now let's move on to our final safety controller selection category. Type of safety controller reset desired. Safety controllers are available in two reset categories. These are automatic or manually monitored, also known as trailing edge reset. 
Depending upon the application, the choice of safety control or reset category may be an important selection criterion affecting both convenience of machine operation and degree of personnel safety. For machinery with a safety controller in the safety circuit, the machine cannot operate unless the controller's safety outputs are enabled. This enabling is done differently in the two types of safety controller reset categories. The advantage of automatic reset is convenience. For safety controllers designed with automatic reset, if a machine guard is opened, thus stopping machine operation, the safety outputs can be re-enabled simply by closing the guard and pressing the controller reset button. Though this provides convenience in selected applications, it should be recognized that these units do not provide a means of checking the controller start circuit for a stuck or manipulated reset button. Safety controllers designed with manually monitored reset address this concern by requiring a 24 volt to 0 volt transition, a trailing edge signal to the controller's feedback circuit in order to re-enable the safety outputs. With this feature, if a controller reset push button has welded contacts or has been manipulated to remain in the on position, the safety controller cannot be reset and therefore the safety outputs cannot be re-enabled. This type of reset feature is particularly important for applications in which a person can enter a hazardous machine area during periods of shutdown and have the guard close with them inside the dangerous area. In such an instance, a manually monitored reset eliminates the possibility of an unexpected startup due to a faulty or manipulated push button in the machine safety controller reset circuit. As a final thought in this section, regardless of the type of safety controller reset chosen, either automatic or manually monitored, it is prudent to design any safety application with a dedicated machine restart device such as a push button. This ensures that a machine will not restart solely by the resetting of the safety controller and the resultant enabling of its safety outputs. This concludes the section on selection methodology. Armed with knowledge of the various selection criteria we've just explained, a safety professional can identify a safety controller that best meets their application requirements. Let's use our decision tree model to demonstrate an example of safety controller selection. Our example will use a machine guarding application with the following requirements. Desired stop category. Stop category 0. Type and number of monitored safety inputs. One keyed interlock with two normally closed contacts. Available supply voltage. 24 volt DC. Number of safety outputs required. Three. Safety control category required. Safety control category three. Type reset required. Trailing edge. As seen by moving through the decision tree selection chart, the most suitable Schmerzel safety controller for these specific application requirements is our model SRB-NA-R-C.27. Schmerzel offers a wide range of safety controllers for a diversity of applications. Should a suitable standard unit that meets your application needs not be available, we would be pleased to consider designing a custom model. We trust that this tutorial has provided you with a better understanding of the function, use, and selection of safety controllers. This video, together with Volumes 1 and 2, are part of our continuing effort to provide information of value to the safety system designer. Should you have any questions or need assistance in selecting a unit suitable for your specific needs, please call. One of our competent application engineers will be happy to offer assistance.